Okay, using the surface or the uh, curve tool to start modeling. It's a very handy way to go about making kind of specified lines and stuff and extruding actual planes from them instead of uh, trying to drop a, a plane in there or something like that. Then um, going about trying to um, trying to trace around to the side, which works. I mean, box modeling, but then there's some little um, certain aspects you may want to actually kind of draw with the curve tool and be able to use that in your advantage, which is pretty handy. Um, you just got a few little basic things to kind of understand about it. Uh, this is your curve and surface tool shelf right here. Now, I guess nerves, if most of you never really understand what nerves is, the actual non-uniform rational B splines provides a 3D modeling framework based on geometric primitives and drawn curves. Um, you can construct 3D models from it, uh, based outlines on it. Obviously, you know what curve stands for, but if you say you just got your tool here, this EP curve tool, you can just start creating lines, basically. Press enter. And then you can kind of move these lines around, rotate them around. You notice the axis tools move up here too, or the uh, translation tools. And you can do stuff like start using them to your advantage. I control duplicate and made another one and just slide it right like that using these surface tools up here. Um, different tools like in your, your shelf tool over here. These are specifically laid out for these, for the curve tools. These are your poly. Uh, edit mesh tools, but say like if you select both of these, you start using these to your advantage and creating certain lines and stuff that you can kind of manipulate. Now the reason why one side is black and one side is gray is because one side is the normals are projecting from one side. In other words, the light is not actually showing on one side. And that's one thing that may um, confuse you whenever you, especially you're creating stuff out of it. Um, but the best way to do is go ahead and get your shape how you're down and you like it. Then go ahead and convert it to a polygon. You don't really necessarily have to worry about that. But in either case, you can kind of reverse directions of normals. So now that's on that side. Switch it back. So going on and creating our, like a bowl or a vase. Um, you'll be using this revolve tool. And basically that kind of like, is like a lay, works like a lay almost. Go to your side view or to your front view. Say if you just go to here, zero space and start there. And you create the thickness of a bowl. You don't connect them. You don't want to connect them, although you can connect them, but it's not really going to revolve around right. So now you've created like a facet of Basically, what the bowl may look like if you cut like a tiny sliver of it, sliver of it out. Now, notice whenever I did that, if you go to your box up here, you can see the different options. We want to revolve this thing around on the y-axis. You need to make sure if it's set on the x-axis, it's going to revolve around another axis, say like the other one doesn't really work out like you want it and notice it turned black say I did want this shape but I wanted to reverse the direction of the normals you know it works for that but I wanted my full shape you curve on the right axis so if you're ever having problems with it like not working right then it's not coming out check your axis make sure you're revolving on the right one because basically if you would have created this in the front view or the side view or the top view you need to make sure um, you're working from the side view and then you know what axis you're going to be revolving around it, it on now it creates this object if you notice over here in your outline or you've got a curve and a revolve you've still got your curve tool in the scene itself and then you've got another object there you can move that one out of the way, but if you move this out of the way, you're actually affecting the shape of that. And what that is, is because this is still basically an instance of this. 
So everything you do to this, if you right click and go to your control vertex and start moving these points that were created, you'll start seeing how you can kind of manipulate and change the, the actual mold over there that you made. And these work, you know, just like anything, you got your curve point, your object mode, control vertexes, you can edit the points. If you delete it, it all deletes. Uh, just a backup, I guess. You can kind of create. Go to these curve tools. Go to your box up here. Keep it on a three cubic. If you just want to make straight lines, like from point to point, you can do a one linear, but you know, three cubic works. Or you can press shift and it creates straight lines or it create a straight line from one to next point. Say you want to close this gap here. What you need to do is select both of the control vertexes right there. You want to connect these two if you, you pressed enter and you want to just make a complete circle. Uh, if you just select the actual object, shift and right click, open close curve, and connect it together. Say there was an instance where you created one curve and then you stopped and you want to connect these two together. You can do that by actually selecting both of them, going up to your surfaces attach. Oops. Oh, I'm doing it. Let's try new ones. Click. See what's wrong, it's not really working on me. Okay, had to back up a little bit there. So if you want to connect the two curves together, if you get to doing something here and you've mashed enter and you stop that and you continue the line, basically you have to select these two and go to surfaces attach. Oops, surfaces attach, go to the box. Uh, keep connect. And what is the deal? Let me put this on pause real quick. Okay, so sorry I had to back up right there, put you on pause for a minute, but I'm back. I was discerning, I was, my mentality was to go to service, but I need to go to curves right here. So make sure that if you do this, say you've created a curve, and you've created another curve, you want to attach the two, just select both of them, your curves, and your attach. You'll basically, you've created another one. You can go into the option box and see the different options for creating the curve. Do you want to keep the original? Do you want to just blend them? Um, insert knot, which is more control vertexes in between there, but. For the most part, if you just don't keep the original, now you have one that you need to delete the history on and you can use. You just need to select both of them if you're going to move it, but if you're going to revolve around or something like that. So it is possible to do that. So going back to our vase project, we're going to need to create an image plane, free image plane. 
Actually, let's go through the process of doing a project. Project window, new vase, we want it on the desktop. Let's just call this one bowl or vase A. Well, I'm all screwed up today. Let's see, vase. Vase A. Vase A. I want to make sure that that vase image I gave you is in the source image of your project. So whenever you download it off, just drop it in the source images of the project folder you created. Say the scene as vase. This is our vase scene. Now I'm going to go to create free image plane. And I have all these options over here in the attribute editor. If you don't see it, you need to, then you're up here, you need to click on the attribute editor. Go to your folder here. Create that image um, of the vase. Now you have this free image plane, basically, that um, if you look at it from all four views, you can use it, you know, you get your top view, your side view, which you can't see nothing because it's a plane, but your front view you can. And the good thing is, is these image planes do not scale. So if you scoot it back, wait, I'm scooting it. If you scoot it back, you really don't even see it. So I want it on this side of the grid, actually. I'm going to kind of trace it from this way so I can trace over it like that. I want it up there on uh, uh, you can turn the alpha gain a little bit down because we're going to be tracing those lines and it's easier to see. Then I want to actually create a layer so I can lock this the image down so I don't ever draw on it. So layers Create layer from selected. We'll name it. You have to be lowercase. Oh no! I got it. Then you have you can turn it off if you want to, or you can turn it to reference image. And now I can't click on it. So let's get started doing our um, curve. So I'm going to go create. Just use the EP tool here. And I'm going to draw from here to there, but I'm not going to connect this because whenever I want it to loft around, I'm going to need something to connect to. So I'm going to draw the outside first. And every time you click and lift off, you're creating basically new control vertexes. So if you don't really have to click, there's no really no not no need in basically there. Now to show you a little trick, you make sure that your vertexes are going to line up right and you won't have a gap in there. You right click, control vertexes. You select these two right here. And basically we want these on exactly on this grid. So what you can do is you can scale it and then you can actually, you know, you can obviously scale it up or however you want to do it. If you scale this way, you're pulling them the opposite directions, but if you pull it past the zero axis, you're basically taking these things to the furthest point you can at the exact same point in space. So looking at it up here, here you would move it a different way. We have them pretty even. 
So we'll go back to object mode. And we'll turn this and move this back a little bit. Back off. I'm just going to select this thing here and see what we got right out of the get go. Go to your box, your evolve box up here. Um, you want to do it on the Y axis? And already it looks really good. And if you came up and the object was actually black, we talked about that just a minute ago, it's because your normals are on the opposite. So if you've got the object and it's just as straight black, you need to go to your surfaces, the reverse direction of the normals, and it'll cut it back to the shaded color. Now what I did is I've actually turned all the shading on the inside out. If I would actually go in here see the shade I'm on the inside of it but we want it on the outside so now you notice I in the outliner you have your curve that still exists you have your evolve surface you can move your evolve surface where you want to but if you move this thing you're going to be affecting that actually surface over there and why it's doing that is because you're moving it off the zero axis and you're actually giving it more value in space. In other words, if you were to I'll take it back to, it's a good way to kind of, kind of fine tune your design basically. So if you just move these vertexes around, Got that little tiny hole in there that's no problem that would be a problem right there but i'm not worried about it now because basically before i do anything else i want to take these and make these things polygons instead of me dropping a cylinder in here from the polygon shelf and trying to form this polygon out of uh, or try to form this face out of polygons it was just easier for me to draw with the surface, but I need to go ahead and convert this to polygons. Go to modify, convert, curves to polygons. And you have a whole selection of stuff over here. You can actually name the count of the polygon. 400, you want them all quads. If it's on triangles, you need to switch it off. I wouldn't suggest going with triangles. So you want quads. Uh, you can lower the count of quads. You can always test it and see what it looks like. But apply. So now it's kind of went into this shape right here, and there's nothing to be scared of. But what it is, it's it's layered the polygon layer over your revolve surface layer. So it's like if you go to Outliner and click, you're actually clicking. You've got two objects here that you can go ahead and move out of the way. And whenever it did that, it hit that um, pivot point way over here, which is a little difficult. So I like to to modify center pivot now that object is where you can rotate it and do what you want to but the only drawback now is if all of these instances are being affected by that one single curve that you originally made you want to separate this right here because you want to be able to like um, smooth it over and do whatever you want to with it and not be affected by any of this stuff so you're going to want to go to edit, delete my type, history. And then you got like a clean little polygon base. You know, it actually clamps holes. Still looks a little jagged, doesn't smooth, it doesn't look smooth. And that just comes with like however many of your polygon count that you put in there. You could go to the smooth preview and it's going to look like that. So. I don't want to smooth it out yet because I may want to go in here and add divisions or move it around again. This is back what we talked about earlier. Go to edge mode, make a ring. And over in our shelf over here, there's a bevel. I've beveled that edge out.
So experiment with making some vases, making some things using the revolve tool. Um, I use this for a lot of making curtains. I go to my top view. Go back in my perspective view. I have it selected. I control D, duplicate. And I have two of them now, curves one and two. Pull them apart like this, and you can loft these two. I want to make it a little smoother, so we'll go modify. Convert nerves to polygons. 400. Let's see where we're at with that one. So now we have this nice polygon. Plane. Edit delete history. That means I can get rid of this. Get rid of all that stuff I use, and I have my own separate little parted curtain thing. Then I would put like a probably a texture on here to avoid the backside of it. You can experiment with circles. You've got a circle right here. Look at your control vertex. You can manipulate these things here. You can select every other single one. What if you were to scale those? Then select the opposite ones. I'm mashing shift and select. Now I've got this neat shape. Created another circle. You want to loft these two together. I'm going to need to reverse the direction of the normals. Now you on your way to making lampshades, making a skirt, making a cloth, tablecloth of some sort. Uh, it's a really handy tool. You know, you need to obviously, um, you can kind of go and adjust these these things too, which is really cool. But once you delete the history on this right here, once you convert it to a polygon and delete the history, you can delete these right here. clean up your environment a little bit, then modify back to the center point. Okay, so I hope that helps out in learning how to import an image plane and messing around with the surface, the curve tool. And uh, any questions, just hit me up. Okay.